Is it okay if I keep paddling while you're recording? Yeah. Okay. So if there's some water noise, we're good. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Brady and I'm on a canoe. And uh, well, welcome to my little getaway, whatever we want to call it. What is that? It's a turtle. A turtle? It was like this big. Are you a serious? Little guy, yeah. A little baby turtle. Oh, I see the minnows too. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking that so many times we're in a run and gun situation where we just need to throw up an interview within minutes and just be good to go. But it needs to still look good, obviously, because everything that we need to do needs to look good. So this video is dedicated to making a run and gun budget interview lighting setup and just really give yourself a nice structure of some key components to add and look for when you're going into a scenario that you're really not familiar with. So that's what we're doing here. And I hope you enjoy. But before we get into it, make sure to you know like, share, subscribe. Do all the above, whatever you need to do to tell me that you like this video or you don't like this video, I'm totally fine with it. So when I came into this location, it's a little podcast studio that's at Yoel's house. And I was like, okay, this looks good, but it needs a lot of work as far as the lighting goes because we're working with ultimately just like a window light and that's just not gonna cut it. So what we got to work with, we got an aperture 120D. We've got a couple aperture MCs and we had an aperture, some of those old LS Mini 20s that I had way back in the beginning of my channel. We had those lying around as well. So that's really all that we had to work with. And there's a couple ducks over there. We'll stop and say hi for a second. Hi guys. But that's all that we had to work with as far as our gear went. So diving into it, I knew as almost always, I'm gonna shoot into the corner and there's these really cool curtains that they've got set up, these like velvet curtains. And I was like, okay, this is my corner, this is my frame. Cause you got the little podcast set up and it just looked really nice. And I didn't really have to worry about exposing for any outdoor lighting in this scenario because they were just blinds. So I just blocked out the blinds for the outdoor window and they were not in frame. So it makes it a lot easier and we don't have to have as much exposure out of our lights to be able to expose properly. Now that I had my frame in place, of course I'm gonna start with my subject because my subject is going to be the most important thing to light for an interview. So I'm gonna set up a key light upstage and you're gonna keep it upstage by meaning you're shooting into the shadow side of your subject. And you also need to keep in mind that you've got two different camera angles typically for interviews. You've got, kind of got like the main wide and then you typically have a more narrow tight shot more along of their profile just so you can cut to an A and B camera and that's what we've got going on here. So by lighting upstage, you wanna make sure that your camera is directed upstage for both camera angles, meaning you're shooting into the shadow side of your sh subject on both camera angles. So that's what I was doing with my A and B setup and I kept that 120D with a softbox as my key light and I had that upstage, meaning that light is wrapping around and you start to see that light come from the highlight into the shadow side and the camera, the viewer, is looking into the shadow side. So that was our first light that I had set up because I know that with an interview, most likely I'm just gonna feather that Rembrandt lighting from the side, giving that Rembrandt, oh, there's some iguanas fighting. Right there. So when I'm diving into an interview, I wanna feather that Rembrandt lighting, meaning putting that triangle of light on the shadow side of my subject and how much or how little I really depend on the scene and the feeling of everything and what the client walks and you know me, I like stuff moody and dark. So I always feather towards that shadow area. But if you need a little bit more, just bring the 120D a little bit more towards the front side, giving you a little bit more wrap around towards the shadow side. So that's the key light, the 120D with a softbox on it and you're good to go. But Obviously, it needs a lot of work. The entire room is dark. It's falling off into shadow. These birds, man. <laughs> Shut up. It's annoying, all right? So we've got the key light in place and it needs a lot of work. Typically, to pull a subject out from the shadows and out from the background and separate them and create a little bit more depth, I'm gonna use a rim light on that shadow side because you see that my shadow side is really falling into darkness. So by taking the next light, which was an Aperture MC, super small light just on an arm sticking over my shoulder, shining down on me, you already see that it just makes this little like edge light and edge line on my shoulder, on my hairline, on my neck, and it brings me already out significantly from the background. And if you have just two lights to work with like this, like a pocket light and a key light, this can give you a great setup and you don't need to worry about additional lighting. But you know, I just wanted to polish off the scene a little bit more because we are falling into darkness. But as for this rim light, I wanted to keep it a warm light just because I always like having a warm tungsten rim light to balance with the daylight light source on my interview subject. So that's what I want for, I think it was at 3200 Kelvin on the Aperture MC and that was the rim light. So now we've got the key light in place, we've got the rim light in place. 
But like I said before, we've got this cool podcast set up in the background. And let's say this interview is for a podcast attendee or something along those lines. You want to show off the entire scene that you're in. So I see that they've got these really cool velvet curtains and to match with the rim light, I wanted another tungsten pop. So first I added some Aperture MCs just kind of scattered throughout the background. There was one that I had placed literally just upright on a cardboard box behind me. And that was shining on the podcast arms and the mic arms just because it added like this nice little bokeh glimmery out of focus pop of texture on the mic stands and the table and a little bit of the curtain as well. And then it took one more MC and I blasted it up straight from the ground. Again, it was like resting on a power cable on the ground going up at the curtains. So we've got a little bit more color pops and lighting pops and those as well were at 3200 Kelvin. And then I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, well it's starting to get a little bit flat and you wanna keep some contrast of your exposure levels throughout the entire scene. So on frame left, I noticed that it was this just very flat and I was wondering how I can drive the attention a little bit more toward myself. Oh my God, there's pigeons everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I noticed that on frame left it was a little bit flat and I was like how can I just can I put like a streak of light or another MC or what can I do and I was like these M, the LS mini 20s they're like Fresnel lights so you can zoom in and focus them and make them a really direct light and use the barn doors to shape it so I just put a uh, top of the frame left corner kind of coming down into the left a nice uh, shaft of tungsten light again and I think it was 2700 Kelvin or 3200 Kelvin coming down raking the side of the curtains and it created this slash of light that was almost like a leading line pointing at me over my shoulder. So it's almost like saying, hey, look at me, look here. This is where you're supposed to look. And now we're starting to get this really nice contrast of pops of light and pops of color throughout the entire frame. And we're not only lighting myself or the subject, the interviewee, but we're also lighting the entire space because that is important to make a really nice compelling frame. You know, there's times when I'm going out on the bayou on the canoe with my friend Dave and I don't know what to wear. You know, I got to impress the birds, the ducks, the occasional alligator. But I got a solution for you and that solution is cuts. No, in all seriousness, whenever I go anywhere, I'm wearing cuts. You've seen it in all of my videos. I'm practically wearing cuts everywhere I go. When I travel down here to Florida, my whole suitcase is full of cuts. So I guess what I'm getting at is cuts has my back all the time with all their shirts that are like perfectly tailored to myself. They don't wrinkle, so when I'm shoving them in a suitcase, I just don't even need to worry about it. And with all of their color options, it just makes traveling easy to match up with pants or flannels or whatever it is that I need. Leaving a link down below for you guys to get 15% off cuts using code Brady Bissett or the link in the description. But let's get back into our lighting setup. Let's dial this back and break it down for a second. We've got the key light in the rim light. These are kind of like foundation, like you're gonna do in pretty much every interview, give or take a little bit of the stylistic choice if you wanna add some negative fill or some bounce light on the far side, so on and so forth. But what we had done in the background is what is a little bit more unique to each scene and something that you really wanna take note of when going into a scene. How can you get interest in the background because you wanna make the background just as compelling as the subject is themselves. So what I did after I set up the key light and the rim light is ask myself how can I add some interest and how can I you know, use my lighting to my advantage to make the scene all around very beautiful. So that's what I asked myself. I was like, how can I use the limited lights that I have, the MCs and these LS20s, to make a little bit more interesting light pops throughout the frame? And that's what I did. So I just placed the MCs. It's nice to have these MCs so you can just place them in in uh, like bookshelves or on the floor or just on, you know, like to create texture because the goal of lighting is to create texture, create depth, create visual interest and contrast pops of light and dark areas. And ultimately that's all that I did with my lighting setup. Like I said, it's a very run and gun. You wanna be able to pop this up in 20 minutes, shoot and be out the door in as little time as you need with as little budget as possible. And I was thinking about it because I know a lot of us run into situations like this all the time. We can't always throw up miraculous lighting setups and bring in all these heavy and expensive lights. So I figured that this would be a great video for us to touch on. And that's really all that I wanna to touch on. I've gotta go paddle this canoe right here. So I appreciate you sticking around on my little scenic tour, seeing some birds and some pigeons. And that's all I got for you guys. So I hope you have the greatest week possible and I will see you next time.